This is what we got. We got a 2002 Chevy Avalanche. Rear wheel drive, Z66. Gonna do rear brake pads, rotors, and calipers. Of course, you know how to jack it up. Well, break your lug nuts loose first, jack it up, support it, remove your tires, and then you need to remove your calipers. And then you'll need to pinch off your flex hoses. If you got the special tool to, to pinch them off, that's great. If you don't, use a pair of vice grips, small pair. And do not crimp down on them real hard, just crimp down on them lightly. Just so they hold the fluid from dripping. Because you don't want to drain all your fluid out. And then you have a hard time getting the rest of the air out. Okay. So, we're going to... Remove our calipers and then we're gonna go from there. Of course, you know your lug nuts are seven eighths, okay? So once you get them off, then you need to get a 12 millimeter and remove the bolts for your calipers. All right, 12 millimeter heads, okay? Get yourself a pair of, if you're doing calipers, then you need to get yourself a pair of needle nose, vice grips. And you wanna open them up. Nah, maybe maybe a little bit looser. You don't want to pinch them. So, put them on there if you don't have a special tool. Feel it. Make sure you're not actually smashing the line. I don't know what that is. Let's see. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, then I'm going to remove the the banjo bolt and that's 11 millimeter or a 7 16th make sure you get yourself a pan to catch the fluid okay okay i took out the banjo bolt my caliper's draining and i got a little bit of drippage coming out of my hose so i'm gonna do is i'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit more Okay, I tightened up my vice grips a little bit more. Not dripping or anything. And then I'll need to take off my uh, caliper, get my caliper out of there. Get myself a decent sized screwdriver. Get in there and pull it out. Get behind it like that. Right off. I'm replacing these calipers because the inside pad is metal to metal and the outside pad is got about an eighth of an inch left. But on the driver's side, they got a quarter inch of pad left. So uneven wear, and this was inner pad is wore out, metal to metal, and you should replace the caliper anytime you have metal to metal on your caliper part where the pistons are. Next you want to remove is the caliper bracket. It's held in by two 18 millimeter head bolts. On the back side, there's one at the top and there's one at the bottom. You can use a big extension, not extension, ratchet with an 18 millimeter on it and break them loose. There's a ratchet swivel head. If you don't have that, you can use an 18 millimeter wrench. Make sure you put the wrench on there. Nice and strong. All right. Right there. Get on like that. Kind of hold it a little bit with your hand like that. You know? And then hit this part with your sludge. Three pound sludge. Like that. You know, and you'll break it loose. The reason why you don't put it on put your hand on here is to keep it from bouncing off the, the head of the bolt and make sure you get a nice square hit on the head of the wrench. And then once you get the wrench loose, if you happen to have a ratchet, a ratchet wrench is great. Put the ratchet wrench on there and, and you can go pretty fast with a ratchet wrench. 
but make sure you put your hand on the head of the wrench down below where it goes down to the head so it doesn't fall off and then you'll bust your knuckle. Okay, so you get them two bolts out and we'll go from there. Okay, caliper bracket, caliper bracket bolts, caliper. If you're going to not replace the caliper and you're just doing brakes, you'll need to take your brake pads out of the bracket and your hardware abundant clips, get them out. And then in this surface inside here, you need to have that nice and clean, rust free. Use a die grinder, some, a, a little rotary disc on and clean it up and then paint it and then put your clips back in there. And then also the slides, make sure that they're free. See, this one's free. This one's not, this one's frozen. So you need a new caliper bracket. Now you can try heating them up and turning them, but most of the time they only last for a little while. So now we need to get our caliper off. Not caliper, rotor. Jeez, what's going on here? All right, if it's, if it's stuck on there, which it is not, but if it is frozen on there, we'll need to hit it around the studs. totally no good you can pound it hanging around the outside vibration and knock it loose it makes a little penetration inside there will help too and then you get your parking brake shoes in there hanging you up so you need to bang on them back and forth the vibration works out a lot okay so we'll get this one off Look at our shoes. Okay. Back plates have gone. Not gonna have any problems with that rubbing against the, the new rotor, huh? Always. To get a new backing plate, you have to take the axle out and get them on. That whole piece, so. Let's see if you parking brake shoes See if they separate off the back of them. See, this one's already separating off. So, have to have new parking brake shoes. So, what you can do is also you can just push up your the shoe part and get it off of there. It's just like a big horseshoe. And get your little pieces out of inside of here for your adjuster. And then you can just remove your parking brake shoe. Because most of the time the cables are all frozen and nobody uses them anyway. So, this guy's so far it's okay, it's still on there, but should be replaced. Also, it's got a bad stud. I might have a stud, I might not, but it's how you get them out. Find your new stud and put it in there. Get a couple washers and your lug nut. Get some grease on your lug nut. Tighten up your lug nut and it'll pull the stud right in. You put the washers on there to make up the gap for this piece here where there's no thread. Or if you got an installer, you can use the installer. It's a big fat piece with the ball bearings in it. I know the other side is missing one too. Like when I do some uh, hub bearings, a couple of my pound of studs out because I kind of know what I do got and don't have. <laughs> you know, so match it up. Make sure you stud your uh, wheel nut threads on there, and you can put it in here. Weasel it in there from behind. Get it in there. Okay. Stack it with some washers, and I'll show you. See? Make sure it clears that ledge. See how it's fatter? 
and I don't need a certain amount for the width of that. So I need to put these on there. And then when I tighten up my nut, those will go over that. I get my nut on there and I tighten it up and I watch the back of it. As soon as there's no gap and you hear the impact, stop, stop, okay? Okay, the rust on here needs to be removed. It's got high spots and low spots. When you get high spots and low spots, rotor doesn't sit flat and the rotor wobbles like that. And that'll give you a brake pulsation to your brake pedal. Being that my shoe is cracking off, I did is I pulled them up, got them out of the, the holders on the bottom, got the whole thing loose, and I walked it off the side, you know. Yeah, I got them like that. Let's see if I can put it back on for you. But anyway, I walked them off like that. You know, just like, just like that. Okay. Type. Get it in there and walk it off the same way. Get them out of there. Okay, so back and plate's all rusted. Ain't no good anyway. It's gonna create problems. Take out your adjusters out of the holder down below so they don't fall inside your rotor. Okay, and then we'll put the rotor on after I got it cleaned up. I'm gonna put some uh, anti-seas on there too, a little bit. You take those pieces out. There it is, three pieces. Okay. They go inside here. All right. Here we're gonna replace the backing plate. You're gonna need those. I'll put them in a bag and give them to the customer. Okay, I got a fine film of anti-seize. Now I'm ready for my Brake rotor. You got a new brake rotor. New brake rotors have oil film all over the brake surface. Clean them up with soap and water or degreaser or windshield washer solvent or uh, Windex, something like that. Do not use brake clean. Brake clean deteriorates the brake pads. Okay, okay. Got your new brake caliper. Oh, brake caliper. Make sure you match them up and make sure they're correct. Line, line. Bleeder, bleeder. Make sure they're right, okay? So now what you wanna do is separate your caliper from your caliper bracket. Remember those are 12 millimeter. If your caliper bracket slides spin on you, you have to get a pair of needle nose vice grips and get in there and hold them, okay? Okay, now, this is what you want them to look like if you're not replacing them or you're using your old ones. You want to clean them up and get them nice and clean inside there, no rust. Because when the rust comes, it expands. And when it expands inside here, it makes the pads real tight so they won't be able to slide in, the, in these little slide area. So then they hang up and create a brake problem, even overheating. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to paint them. I don't know if this is painted or not, but I'm gonna paint them and I'm gonna put my abundant clips on there and make sure you put your clip inside here for your caliper also to push it pushes on the pads. And you put your abundant clips in there. See how that one is? Little tabs sticking up. Them go up inside of here. Make sure you push them in there and the bottom them out, okay? Push them in first. Get in there. Line it up. Center the center piece and push the center piece in first. Then you go and do the sides, push them in. And make sure it's bottomed out, okay? Next thing you need to do is put this into your 
new caliper. I always forget which way they go. So I always gotta look. Okay, and this goes towards the pistons. And then, uh, like so. Just gonna take two hands. So, hold out. Use a screwdriver to help pry this side in and push it down in there. And what you're doing is you're pushing in that little clip on this side, pushing it in so you can push this piece down. Okay? That part clips into that little lip right there. And then this one just goes over the hump. Okay? We're all set there. So now we're gonna mount the caliper bracket. Get your two caliper bolts, not caliper bolts, caliper bracket bolts and mount it. Got your bracket bolts snugged up. Next you need to do is torque them to 80 foot pounds. Double check your torque specs. I'm just giving you a ballpark. So if you don't have a torque wrench, but you got your long breaker bar, tighten them up pretty good. If you don't have the big ratchet, then use a ratchet and a pipe, called a cheater pipe, that'll help tighten them up. Also, if you don't have either of those, you just got the wrench, then you gotta use your wrench and your hammer again. Remember? Put the wrench on the bolt. Wrench on the bolt, hold your hand on the wrench, swing the hammer from down below and hit the end of the wrench right here and hit it pretty good. Okay, you can do that a couple times, but you know that thing ain't coming loose. All right. Now we need to put our brake pads in. Here's my brake pads, I get the squeakers on them. I always put the squeakers towards the rotation Rotation is this way, so the squeaker will go on top, okay? I'll put them in at the bottom. And then you wanna push in with your pad right here on that part of it and push it in, okay? Do the same thing with the inner pad. Squeak around the top, put it in at the bottom, feel around for it, push it in, okay? That's good. Now we'll go get the caliper. Okay, put your caliper on there. Start your top one. Because you got that new spring inside here, it pushes up against the, uh, the pads. So what you need to do is push in on the caliper and line up your bottom one and start that one. So you got your both your caliper bolts started. Snug them up and then tighten them up to 18 foot pounds. Double check your torque spec again. Okay, now it's time to connect your brake line. Make sure the washers aren't stuck in there. And then anything else you wanna clean up that surface. I always use a Brillo pad, I just hit them lightly. After you got them all cleaned up, put your new banjo bolt that comes with the caliper, new washer in between the caliper and the line, and a washer underneath the bolt, okay? Start it, take the line, seat it, make sure it goes behind that edge there, and then you can snug up your line You know, make sure it's in there properly centered. Snug it up and then tighten it up. That one you want to torque to like 13 foot pounds. You want to double check that too. But I always tighten them up pretty decent. It's a hollow bolt so I don't over -tor torque it. Okay, I got my line on. I tightened it up. Take my vice grips off. Take out my bleeder. I'll put some anesthes on my threads on my bleeder. And I'll thread my bleeder in and I'll back it up 
so it's loose a little bit and it allow me to gravity bleed my line a little bit into the caliper and gravity bleed into it okay i got before i even put my bleeder in it was already having fluid come out okay can you see it hope you can see it now also what i do then is i'll tap on the And then now I'll snug it up. Okay. Then I'll go and do my other side brakes same way. And then uh, when I get to the part where I'm at now and I tap the rotor and I got all the air out that I can get out, snug up the bleeder, I'll lower the vehicle down. And I'll double check my brake fluid and then I'll start my engine and I'll push my pedal to the floor slowly a couple times. Keep doing that till my pedal keeps getting firmer and firmer. And when it's firm enough, shut the car off, raise the vehicle back up, bleed the right side, make sure there's no more air bubbles coming out of there, go to the driver's side. Make sure there's no air bubbles coming out of there either. And then when I'm done doing that, no bubbles. I'll put my tires on and I'll torque them to 140 foot pounds. And then I'll lower it the rest of the way down and I'll double check my brake fluid. Make sure my cap's on. Shut my hood. Go inside the cab, start it up. Push the pedal to the floor a couple times, make sure it's got a good, hard, firm pedal, and then you can put it in drive or reverse, wherever direction you need to go. And that's how you do it. Thank you.